Hello, hello. Where is everybody? I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. Is that Anne Morgan? And she, is she she's the one Anne Morgan? Yes, Anne from Australia. Painting again. I sure am. Yeah, you're doing you're doing a wonderful job. You're doing good. You haven't lost any uh, skills. Um, no, I probably haven't. I'm just finding it easier the second time around. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 For sure. Every time you play, it gets easier and easier. And then sometimes we have to remind ourselves of things and stuff like that. I I swear, as I'm getting older, I don't know if it's menopause or what, but I'm having a hard time remembering things. And <laughs> I definitely got to keep going back and looking at things and reminding yeah. myself. You know, how is it laid out, colors, um, extra shading that I can put in, stuff like that. Because it's not in my brain. It really isn't. And definitely, I, I'm finding myself, I, I don't know if it's Alzheimer's setting in or what, but I'm telling you, literally, yeah, I've had... I think it's, we've learned so much, for you especially, you know. Yeah, definitely, that's too, because you jump on so many different types of flowers and then maybe there are some types that you don't visit as often and you got to mm -hmm. definitely remind yourself how to lay them out. So. Steve and I used to take country western dance lessons and every week we were learning about three or four new dances and you would only do the dance maybe once a month at that. Mm -hmm. And it got we knew like 300 or some in our, in our heads. And we just finally had to quit because it was just too much. We <laughs> couldn't keep track of them all. Yeah, you yeah, definitely got to keep all revisiting. The steps and, yeah. Yeah. It, was, like, it just became overwhelming. Yeah, definitely. Like if they would give you like maybe three steps in the beginning and then every week keep adding one more step so that you keep repeating the first three and then right. add one more, yeah. keep repeating those four. Now add one more, keep repeating those five, add one more, you know, then maybe we'd start to get it slowly as a as a set right but if, mm -hmm. yeah different ones every time <laughs> um i'd have five feet you know and i'd be tripping over myself for sure <laughs> i even thought it would be great if you did a refresher course you know just all the basic yeah again, definitely to... that's why i'm here every month for our meet and greets so i definitely remind you guys a lot of the basic yeah. strokes every month um the recordings are all there you know um i really don't know if i can add any more to them now i'm just definitely just keep reminding you guys of things that um to go back and look at try again try with different brushes try with different yeah, colors saying like take all those 14 courses and condense them into like one or two hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I've tried to do that through the boot camps. Definitely, yeah. yeah definitely the boot camps are yeah. part of that. The That one part that I added at the end of the five classes. Um, then there's like a review and yeah. troubleshooting. You know, we tried to go over through, through the whole five courses in like a boot camp style. Um, so, yeah, definitely. I'm always here to repeat and remind you guys and um know that there yeah, is a lot the meet and greets kind of do that that's yeah. a refresher for yeah us. definitely i'm here to remind you of those 10 basic strokes there to get started and it definitely bumps up to all the flowers and, and different things that you can do with uh playing with your brush for sure yeah definitely i'm always here for you guys and then through the projects too you know there's a lot of the easy mm -hmm. ones in the club now definitely there's a lot of repetitive of, of all those basic easy flowers and strokes you know to keep practicing with so yeah. you learned in the yeah. program and then now those easy projects are definitely hopefully going to be helping you to keep pushing yourself to practice them and then mm -hmm. of course you know there's more advancing projects that i have available too with the practice of did, paints. did you say you had 130 projects on the site I lost count. I lost yeah. count. <laughs> I couldn't believe that because, yeah. you know, I was there when we developed, started the site. Yeah. And I thought you're up to 130 yeah. already. Yeah, or more. Yeah, I definitely have lost count now. I just wow. definitely, I've had to put, that's why I built the club now. So then that way I have less pages because each of them mm -hmm. were a page on my website for the video players. And um, so now, yeah, hopefully people will like the club, that they have access to all those fun and easy ones that I've yeah. been putting in there. 
and then we keep adding to it every month so yeah definitely that's what i've been trying to do is just keep enforcing those fun and easy strokes and then bumping you up and then those that are definitely ready for more you know then jumping on certifications is highly 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 recommended even if you don't want to teach you know so yeah. like i know you did your level one you know pushing yourself through level two i can't say enough for that level level two definitely i never did level one you never did, did? oh no i think yeah, you did never oh, did. did no mm -hmm. yeah definitely that it gives you a little bit more of a time frame you got to work on you know there's a little bit more discipline that you got to put that practice in and you know being tested a little bit more right where people definitely have a lot more freedom with my program where they can just go and practice some people don't even ever show me any other practice yeah. you know so i can yeah. you know i'm not following up in a way where i can smack you in the hand and go where is it mm -hmm. <laughs> you know well, i have i bought all the skill builder books i have all of the notebooks i have all of the basic stroke books mm -hmm. so but uh it's just forcing myself disciplining to, yourself to it yeah, and, I've been yeah. through like one or two of the books but you know there's like seven all together yeah so like there's like five i haven't even hit yet well that's the thing like you, you want more to practice you want it all but then let's it could be overwhelming and too much too like you were saying mm -hmm. to condense my 14 courses is a wonderful idea but for some people they can catch on to it as a refresher but for a beginner to start with it's just yeah, you know, it's it well. yeah. so you mm -hmm. definitely got to start with the basics and then just keep bumping yourself up you know well, and Anne is smart to start at the beginning yeah you know, she's starting to go back yeah and that's a good definitely. idea when you finish the 14 start over like i said change the brush size change the colors change mm -hmm. you know get a little bit more confident with those strokes where hopefully you're seeing a progression of getting better and changing and playing with them more right and changing those gradients and seeing the results of it right and the more we play it's just you got to play and not commit yourself to a project where you're like oh if it doesn't look good it's going to be garbage you know like i said paper plastic anything cheap that you know you can just play on keep playing and mm -hmm. definitely um meeting with me sending me a homework like again a lot of people will play on their own but they think oh i can't send it to her it's too bad but how am i gonna mm -hmm. help? how am i gonna help if i don't yeah. see it if i don't see where i can see where you're struggling by a picture a lot of times and usually i can suggest you know something is off and make a change here or add that and then if you know really needed then definitely i loved meeting you guys private on zoom anytime you know you can pick my brain and and really hone in on troubleshooting what your needs are you know a little bit more so yeah like through the meet and greets i like to try to answer as many questions as possible you know definitely that's what i'm here for if there's any strokes that you're struggling with or flowers or projects even of mine or, or donna's or whatever like you're struggling with people have definitely picked my brain uh about uh, anything that they might be working on a surface glass fabric you know they're all slightly different uh, definitely i've got a lot of the hot topics that we've had covered in, over the last year we've been doing this now uh so i've tried to make little smaller segments so you guys can mm -hmm. find the, find some of these hot topics that we've done here in our meet and greets you know a little bit easier so definitely if you haven't seen my youtube channel you know definitely go and check it out now under the hot topics playlist and there's loads and loads of videos there that are constantly you know a lot of repetitive like we're not unique in any way a lot of us in the beginning struggle in very similar ways and so definitely sometimes these meet and greets can be a little bit repetitive for those who are here all the time because yeah but it's, it's good refresher yeah definitely and maybe different ways of tweaking things for sure mm -hmm. so and, you know each time you do teach it or show it um you might be using a different way of explaining it and you know sometimes certain ways will grab you know grab yeah i'm always trying to better. come up with wacky mm -hmm. ways of explaining things that's for yeah. sure yeah, and definitely, like I said, sometimes just the size. Sometimes it's a smaller or larger size. Sometimes it's different color combinations that just seem to connect mm. with you easier. You know, so yeah, definitely. Um, I love all the feedback, and I'm always open to suggestions. If there's any ways or anything else that I can add, you know, definitely. This is what you know I'm here for. Pick my brain. 
um i love that i had a few people that are new they're in my community group they're jumping in like i don't know where they all came from i swear i really <laughs> don't know just all of a sudden the bell came on and just all kinds of people started joining i've had a few people sign up tonight they were all new names to me um but unfortunately a lot of them didn't show up a couple of them i think did um there's a I'm new. I'm Robin. Yeah, I'm just looking at you there, lady. I'm just seeing you. you I don't think I've seen you here before. Welcome, welcome. You wanna... oh, this is my first. Yeah, it's also awesome. Yeah, welcome. And definitely tell me about yourself. Tell me, you know, how much have you been playing around with One Stroke? Uh, are you struggling with anything in particular that I can I help you with? I always wanted to paint, and I'm soon going to be 64 years old. And I decided if I'm ever going to do it, I need to do it now. And one stroke caught my eye on YouTube, and I just, I've probably watched 100 hours of it. You know, I just love it more and more and more all the time. Yes. And I do go out and look at other artists, but and I pick up maybe little different techniques or little things they do with the brush or something. But I always come back to the um, one stroke, and I couldn't find anybody to help teach me. Oh. And then one day I just stumbled upon you, Mandy, and like an example, the the... One stroke leaf, not the one stroke, but the one that has starts out with a heart, pivot heart. Okay, and then heart shape. I mean, I could not make that to save my own life. And then you made the remark one day when I was going through your lessons that that middle step when you do your first section, it's a pivot, right? And then you follow it on out to bring it to a point that you keep that bottom edge flat do you follow what i'm saying yeah 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 really no, yeah i'm just going really trying to digest what you're getting out of it so yeah you get you only you do the curvature along the top of it and you try to keep that bottom edge flat and yeah. then you come back around and it it's clean that way yeah and I, I don't know how to explain how you explained it, but all of a sudden it just clicked. Well, I like to separate things in parts too, right? So there's the first part and then right. the second part. Yeah, and so I want to show you that, I don't know if you can see at all. Uh, oh, it's pretty blurry, isn't it? Yeah, as close as you it. get is pretty blurry. Yeah, I'll take a picture and send it to you. Yeah, I think I it's mean, because you're using that virtual background. That might be, this, to to you just shut it off just so I can see whatever's in your background. I don't know what to do to shut it off. Oh, it's probably down in your settings in your video. So it says stop video or mute down in the corner. It might have some settings, video settings. They, yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. The thumbnail, it was, I joined a couple weeks before your last Zoom. So it must have been about the middle of May-ish, beginning of May. Oh, probably around the time I, I had my surgery. <laughs> oh, I signed up for a meet and greet in may and then i couldn't make it my son came from north oh, okay. carolina and i couldn't make it yeah so yeah i've been a little bit out of it this last month i had some mouth surgery done and uh too many pain pills <laughs> probably yeah. it looks great though yeah it really looks, yeah, it looks really yeah so yeah that's some of my trivia um of issues that i've been having with my teeth and definitely you know we all have different issues in our life you know sometimes it's other family members the health or um you know or your own or things like that that set us back we put our practice and our crafts away for a little while we bring them back out and most of us you know are mature and more retired definitely have more time kids are all gone you know we don't have to worry about little ones unless we have grandchildren coming in um but definitely this is a, a popular age where we we definitely get into trying to find stuff to make us happy and create and you know making gifts for family or you know whatever reason it is like for me i like to do the craft shows and sell my art and stuff like that too so miss penny is practicing i see her getting some strokes going on there she's playing with the 10 basic strokes that are already in different directions and that's awesome <laughs> she just finished my whole program really one pro one course at a time guys really start at the beginning because i don't really repeat a lot of things and i just make things a little bit harder a little bit harder a little bit harder so if you haven't jumped on the first five robin and just jumped on to the areas that you you're troubleshooting yourself definitely you'll see a difference too if you go in the progression of the first i have not i've taken it step by step because i'm determined to have a strong foundation right okay perfect. i had been bouncing around and doing lots of different things yeah and then i committed to myself when i purchased your program 
to go from step one and just walk yeah through it. and send me pictures along the way definitely i do have um another idea of doing another series guys add to my series for practice and paints and this one i definitely would want to concentrate more on design so there's different ways of doing like L shapes, borders, um, you know, working with a lot of tall, straight standing flowers to, um, I can't remember all of them right offhand. Oh, there she is. Um, but there's probably about five different basic shapes, like S shape patterns, you know, something to, to have like a formation and design to the, um, painting that you want to do right so a lot of people like, I would I be very interested in that yeah yeah definitely I've had a couple of people ask me about that lately then or to share their their struggles there's like how do you put a design together you know to make it look uniform and flowing and, and stuff like that so I've concentrated on how to build these flowers right one at a time and just you know their regular stances how they would sit in the garden you know how their leaves would go so definitely like things to group together and color combinations again and more design aspects so I definitely want to come up with at least five different designs that I've got in my head here I've been playing around with um trying to figure out which you know flowers to put with what and trying to make it still fairly easy for you guys but still concentrating on more of the design aspect of it all playing with color so yeah we're just playing around with some food for thought and um because i was thinking about doing another flower series coming up but every week we do a different design for five weeks as how i did it before i've got three series there already and um so i definitely want to kind of keep changing these series a little bit keep you know adding to your knowledge bank um you guys haven't seen my site before um it is definitely at the bottom of my program so if you go over to the, my main course uh online course library scroll down the first thing you see is my club and then here is the one stroke practice program so I've got the 14 courses here, but then underneath at the very bottom, I've started adding series. So we've got oh, the yeah. flower series number one, two, three, and also it's basically another series, um, a fruit, right? So I don't know why I kept fruit because it's eight fruit. <laughs> the rest of them all have five. So um, again, we're going to come up with five different designs. Well, I guess I get a little excited and add more. Uh, on some of them, but I definitely tried to make them a little bit different. Some are made on cardstock, like we did some cards. Then what? Second one again, we're learning flowers, but we're learning how to paint on plastic charger plates, platters, and then this series with the uh, fruit is done on little mini canvases. So you get eight little mini canvases that you can put up together, all like one, like a collage. So I definitely want to add to these series. We have a lot of fun through them. It's five weeks. Randy, uh -huh. could you um, practice the or show me the little tick stroke that you use the flat brush for when you're doing your flowers? I'm sorry, what did you call it? What kind of stroke? The, the, it, you know, the, just the little tick stroke, the little using the um, flat brush and just making the, the small Ch mark little chisels. when you're doing your flowers. Definitely. Um, upsize your brush when you're doing them it makes it a little bit easier right say that you are using um 12 for a lot of your flowers definitely mm -hmm. i love doing them with longer brushes so if you've got a 16 or even the three quarter i find that you I do now yeah definitely good <laughs> that's definitely part of it and making sure that your brushes are straight on really nice and flat when you wet them and you squish them you know you gotta have that beautiful point on them right uh, they do get old and beat up after a while and um so that's the only challenge is that um you'll have with the chisel strokes is if your chisel is not on right and then also sometimes when we're doing strokes 
and when we're doing pressures daisy strokes is a very good example of that because that's the same thing as the chisel but just a little bit more pressure then we end up making our brush a little bit i don't know if you guys can see that today um it gets all wonky and spread out so definitely the part of the trick is keeping your brush flat so that you can smooth out that brush all right so i'm really flattening that brush over so that i can keep my brush really stuck together and then when you're doing these little chisels right you get a nicer size of them like say if you were doing you know some fern little ferns right oh, you gotta keep straight on straight on you can slide a little bit right but after a while you might be getting this fanned out so this is where even though i'm not dip dipping and adding more paint sometimes all you have to do is come back to your plate just to smooth out your brush to make it nice and skinny again depending on how skinny you want those chisels right? yep. so if you have a little bit more pressure they're going to be a little bit bigger and even more pressure then definitely they start to turn into daisy strokes right. so i definitely like the longer brush to be able to do them so you don't have to slide so much with it like if you're using a 12 and you wanted to make them a bigger size yeah. then you're sliding more and then that's when sometimes we end up you know maybe not as neat or accurate on our push and pulling right unless you're trying to make them really really tiny the size of the brush right so then you just push 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 right you're not really uh sliding with it mm -hmm. and then that's why i feel like if you want them bigger then upsize your brush so then sounds, that way you're not sounds right. sounds perfect. Good. is that what you're kind of experiencing having some issues with is yes yes yeah they're certainly not turning out as i'd like them <laughs> yeah and definitely just even if you want to do like to practice them a little bit longer like when you're doing all those veins right it's just a barely tickle right and i did have some water in my brush before i started so it did have some movement right yeah when i was doing the hydrangeas yesterday i just could not get these little the little um embellishments to, to work for me yeah yeah definitely they're like all the way around the outsides right you want the it to be a little bit smaller right the little buds that are coming out so i'm just kind of giving a little background there for a minute maybe add a little bit of white Right, so on the outside you're trying to make them smaller yes and then as you're coming in you get, put a little bit more pressure to make some of them bigger and then as you're getting in a little bit more then you can start doing your little bit more of a you know soft teardrop or if you want to do them all in bigger little daisy strokes and right, so this is definitely a big brush then i would definitely dial downsize to an eight you know if you're trying to do like hydrangeas but um you know definitely a lot of our filler flowers right this is definitely one of the uh things i want to talk about in some of this designing like you know there's usually a main element flower then we have like an accent flower and then there's some filler flowers and you know to try to build in some of these designs and what to pick and what to do to play around with adding some of that so yeah that's my next um series that I want to definitely touch up on a little bit more. We're going to play around with all kinds of different things that we've learned already and maybe a few new ones that we haven't. But it's definitely pulling them all together as a, as a design is what I'd like to do. Some of them that might be repetitive. 
from in my program that I've done already. All right, so we're definitely going to throw some poppies in there, and we're definitely going to throw a rose in there. We're you know we've covered a lot of them already, so definitely I want to. We'll be reviewing some of these flowers and then also design aspects of it. Uh, so yeah, definitely chisel strokes. Um, which part of my program do we play around with that? I guess just in a lot of the leaves and the wildflowers. Uh, level one uh, certification is um, a lot of those chisel strokes as well. And a lot of the uh, students are, you know, always struggling with that kind of thing too. Because they're trying to make these little wildflowers and they're just going off to the side. But they're not doing enough layering. Right, so you gotta definitely come on top of each other a little bit more, layer on top of each other, slowly work your way wider, right, and then come in a little bit more narrower. Right, so it's having those odd little ones that go in different directions, right, and maybe having that little bit more white so that they stand out a little bit more 3D. Okay, you can flip your brush around, have the dark at the top, All right, slowly, having on top of each other, a little bit wider, and then coming in a little bit more narrow. Right, so just playing around with you know, a very quick wildflower. Right, so you should have that triangle, like a kite kind of shape, right? So it's coming pointy at the top, coming slowly a little bit wider, and then coming right back in again. Gonna help with your little chisel work. I'm trying to think of all the common things that I've been asked before. Does that does that help, Anne? Yeah, that has, yes, that's great. I'm just thinking you're talking about wildflowers. Well, your wildflowers and our wildflowers are probably a little bit different. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. You guys have all like the, what kind of wildflowers do you have? Do you have dandelions? Um, I think dandelions are weed. <laughs> are they everywhere? <laughs> dandelions? Sorry. What was that? Isn't dandelions everywhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, what kind of flowers do you have as wildflowers? Like bluebells? Um, I'm just trying to think of the ones that no. are even over in England. No, Scotland. no. See, our, our um, wildflowers are all native flowers, like the Sturt Desert Pea and um, uh, what's the can't think, but over in Western Australia, on the other side of the country from here, come um, springtime, it's just c covered in, in wild wildflowers over there, and it's a big tourist tourist event, yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to Google wildflowers in Australia now to see if there's some different mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's yeah. some interesting ones, that's for sure. Yeah, well, if there's any that you want, like your native flowers, like sometimes we have, like we have... Um, different flowers for every province or country, right? So maybe you have mm -hmm. certain flowers for your country that you want to learn. Definitely send some pictures to me. I'd love to tackle some new new projects and new ideas. Some flowers, I had somebody uh, send me a question about, <laughs> um, oh golly, they were really young, out there with colors, beautiful colors and stuff. But some of these flowers, when you go to paint them, they almost look like they they can't be that true. You can't have flowers like that, right? So they're just not so common. That reminds me of something I saw only a couple of days ago, um, pictures of uh, snow gums. Um, and the colours, there was purples and oranges and 
yellows. It was just magnificent. You wouldn't expect those colors to be on a, on a gum tree. Yeah, that's like this guy here too. Like he's so black and dark and vivid orange. Like if you mm -hmm. tried to paint that guy, he probably wouldn't look real. You'd be like, why did you put those colors like that? Like it doesn't make sense. But nature did it, right? It's like somebody obviously uh knows what they're doing <laughs> but you know as an artist some, some is definitely harder to do to copy than others i sent you that picture right yes yes i didn't yeah i'm i'm still like gobsmacked over that i know the colors yeah, of you them. definitely would have to play around with layers and, and ex adding extra shading and, and stuff like that. And then you also have to almost compare, like when you go to put it on Facebook later, you're almost like, this is the flower I'm trying to copy. And you put it beside each other and then people go, oh, okay, now I know what you're trying to create. But if you just put that out there, you're like, what are you trying to do? <laughs> it's what most, because it's not a common flower. It's not like the tulip or the rose or, you know, it's not a very common color combination. So you're like, what is that? <laughs> so that's my experience on that part when you're really trying to get some really unique uh, flowers done. So yeah, definitely.